Plastic is one such material that can be made convenient for everyone on the planet. It is durable, strong and indestructible. Indestructible. Plastic is all set to become the main ingredient of the future generation's recipes. Nearly all the plastic that was ever made is still with us, either whole or in tiny pieces. For decades, the global response to the plastic problem has been recycling. But only 9% of the plastic worldwide is recycled. So is recycling a solution or a myth? Welcome to episode 2 of It's All Plastic. In our last episode, we explored the fascinating world of plastics and their intriguing history. Today, we dive into the pressing issue of plastic recycling. Did you know that one of the major recycling initiatives of the 20th century occurred during times of war, when governments asked their citizens to donate unused metals, tires and nylon? However, the concept of recycling plastic emerged only after the environmental movements of the 1960s. The first plastic waste recycling mill was created in Pennsylvania in 1972 and that became the blueprint for all future recycling plants. These efforts gained momentum in 1980s and 1990s with the introduction of PEAT and HDPE plastics that were specifically designed with recyclability in mind. People began to recognize the cost of plastic, not the monetary cost, but the cost to the environment. In 1984, a shocking 100 million pounds of plastic was gathered in the US, a milestone in the history of plastic recycling. Four years later, in 1988, the closed-loop triangular symbol to identify plastic resin in packaging was adopted and it quickly became a popular symbol for recycling. Cut to 2023, when the process of recycling for most of us ends when we throw plastic items into the relevant bin. Someone comes to collect it and off it goes, leaving our conscience clear. However, the story does not end there for it is not that easy to recycle plastic. Most common use items like plastic straws and plastic bags cannot be recycled. The stuff that can be recycled are so expensive to recycle that they're simply not. Only clean plastic can be recycled. Any plastic with food residual leftovers cannot be recycled. The same piece of plastic can only be recycled about two to three times before its quality decreases to a point where it can no longer be used. Recycling plastic is more complex as compared to recycling paper, glass and metals due to the additional steps required to extract dyes, fillers and other additives. Once a plastic item is recycled, additional virgin materials are added to it to upgrade its quality. This gives the recycled product a new life or a new chance to compete in the market of new goods. So from now on, when you see the phrase recycled material, give some thought to what the word recycle there actually means. For a long time, people have recognized that achieving a circular economy or a circular plastic economy requires action that is often simplified as reduce, reuse and recycle. This mantra follows the waste hierarchy where reducing is preferred over reusing and reusing is preferred over recycling. The three R's of sustainability have now expanded to become six R's. Rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, repair and recycle. But even today, our primary focus remains on recycling because we believe it offers the most effective solution. However, research shows that very little plastic reaches the recycling facilities in the first place, less than 9% globally. So clearly, recycling is not working. In fact, it is worsening the problem in many ways. This is a Greenpeace report from last year. Read the title. It says plastic recycling is a dead end street. Year after year, plastic recycling declines even as plastic waste increases. Greenpeace in May earlier this year also warned that recycling plastic can make it more toxic. It said plastics are inherently incompatible with the circular economy and recycling is scattering microplastics into the environment. Much of our recycled plastic 
still ends up in landfill or in poorer countries where it is melted down, dumped or burnt. Until 2017, China was the world's biggest importer of such material after it decided to close its borders to all types of waste because of concerns around contamination and pollution. Just imagine, the country decided to kill an industry that was worth $24 billion a year. Despite this alarming revelation and alarming figures, plastics are everywhere and alternatives are scarce. And all our efforts are absolutely useless unless we tackle the growing menace of single-use plastics. Corporations and governments have put in thousands of dollars into ad campaigns that gaslight customers into believing that they are causing the plastic crisis. Well, we all know it's the other way around. In 2018, Starbucks released a strawless lid as part of its sustainability drive and later on admitted that the lid contained more plastic than the previous lid and straw combinations. Their defense? was that it was plastic that could be recycled, thus refusing to take accountability. Now, a crucial question here is, is the plastic making industry using recycling to make more plastic? In 2020, Coca-Cola came under fire when it announced that it would not abandon plastic bottles, saying that they were popular with customers. Today, people who litter or people who smoke in public are slapped with heavy fines while imposing almost no responsibility on plastic manufacturers for the numerous environmental, economic and health hazards imposed by their products. We are forced to accept individual responsibility for a problem that we have little control over. Governments around the world have taken measures to ban the use of plastic, but they must also enforce these laws and provide citizens with affordable alternatives. There is no universal sustainable alternative to plastic. The most appropriate material depends on the item's use. For example, using straws made from coconut leaves instead of plastic. The best way to tackle plastic pollution is to prevent it in the first place. Manufacturers must stop making so much unnecessary plastic to reduce the amount entering the economy. Global caps on plastic production could reduce the pressure on recycling systems. Recently, the Paris Olympics decision to use recycled plastic chairs was hailed as a step in the right direction. But we must not mistake it for true sustainability. Greenwashing initiatives on symbolic platforms can create this illusion of progress, but lasting change requires integrating these eco-friendly practices into our daily lives. A very interesting concept called Extended Producer Responsibility or EPR is holding brands, plastic packaging producers and importers responsible for the plastic that they put into a market across its entire life cycle. Plastic recycling does not work, no matter how diligently you wash out your peanut butter container. And even if recycling wasn't such a failure, it would not put an end to plastic waste. Many items are not meant to be recycled. So there's no real way to fix the plastic problem without simply producing less of it. At such a time, can a global treaty help? In March 2022, UN member states started negotiating a new global treaty to drastically reduce the plastic waste that has been poisoning the world. The agreement is meant to focus on the design and production of plastics, not just on what happens to plastic items after we use them. The treaty aims to turn off the plastic tap and end the age of plastic. It's time to embrace sustainable alternatives, demand accountability from industries, and support innovative initiatives to stop using plastic. Our planet is drowning in plastic waste, but amidst the gloom, there is hope. In the next episode, we will bring to you an expert voice to discuss plastic packaging and the responsibility of the plastic makers. Stay tuned for insights, innovations and solutions to the plastic crisis. Watch It's All Plastic on our YouTube channel every Tuesday, 8pm.